Well, good morning. My name is Rocky Moretti. I'm the Director of Policy and Research for TRIP, a national transportation research nonprofit based in Washington, D.C. Welcome to today's virtual news conference for the release of the TRIP report, Keeping Virginia Mobile. I'm going to provide a brief overview of the key findings in the report. Then we're going to hear from Keith Martin, the Executive Vice President of Public Policy and Government Relations with the Virginia Chamber. And then we'll be hearing from Rich Jacobs, the Public Relations and Outreach Manager with Drive Smart Virginia. Following my remarks, we'll have a question and answer period, which my uh, colleague Carolyn Kelly will be moderating. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to uh, indicate uh, by raising your hand or using the chat function in Zoom that you have a question. Uh, and at that point, you'll be elevated by Carolyn to uh, the actual to a speaker and you'll you'll have a, an opportunity to ask questions or any follow-up questions you might have in addition uh in terms of the report uh the report really looks at recent progress that the state's making in improving its transportation system the current condition of the system including traffic safety and traffic congestion and then we'll also break down data by into for the state's four largest urban areas to provide additional information. TRIP as an organization has been putting out reports for more than 50 years. In that time, we released more than 600 reports at the national and state level, looking at the use and condition of the, of the nation's transportation system. And as an organization, TRIP is supported by a coalition of manufacturing, insurance, construction, labor and engineering organizations. The report is based on the latest data that's available from, from the Federal Highway Administration, from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and also from the Virginia Department of Transportation. The key findings of the report is that as Virginia continues to experience significant growth, and we've seen just this year vehicle travel in Virginia returning to pre-pandemic levels, the state has continued to do a good job of moving forward with significant projects, both to relieve traffic congestion and improve the reliability of the system, to improve traffic safety, and, but also to improve the condition of the system. The state has had two significant funding increases in the last several years, starting in 2020, where the state approved a significant increase in its overall state revenue for transportation, and then again in 2021, when we saw the approval of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, both of those have been critical in increasing the amount of funding in the state. Uh, and it, it's allowed the state to move forward with a number of significant projects. These projects in the last couple of years include the widening of a 21 mile portion of I-64 along the Virginia Peninsula, uh, the southbound I-95 Rappahannock River Crossing Project near Fredericksburg, the Chatham Bridge Rehabilitation Project linking Fredericksburg and Stafford County, the widening of portions of Interstate 81, the completion of 23 miles of express lanes on Interstate 66, and the ongoing construction of additional express lanes along portions of the Washington Beltway. These are all been significant projects moving forward. The state also has a number of ongoing programs and projects to address traffic safety, including a safety service patrol that is helping more than 100,000 Virginian motorists every year, either at following crashes or, or vehicle breakdowns, further improvements in coordinating traffic signals and also traffic messaging for, for motorists as well as a variety of safety improvements from improving signage, adding additional rumble strips and also enhancing facilities for pedestrian and bicyclists. With these ongoing improvements, uh, while they're absolutely critical, the reality is Virginia continues to experience significant growth and these improvements will need to continue at that pace. We've seen in Virginia, the population increased 23% since 2000. Uh, we've seen from 2000 and 2019, vehicle travel increased by 14% in Virginia, but then we saw a significant drop off in the early parts of the COVID-19 pandemic. And by last year, vehicle travel in the state was within 2% of pre-pandemic levels. And what we've seen during the first six months of 2023 is a 3% increase in vehicle travel. 
So we actually now have vehicle travel in Virginia back and actually a little bit above the level before the pandemic. As you would anticipate with vehicle travel in, in Virginia back to pre-pandemic levels, we're seeing significant traffic congestion again. TRIP estimates that the cost annually to Virginia Motors of traffic congestion is $5 billion annually in the, the value of lost time and also the cost of additional fuel that's wasted due to traffic congestion. We looked at these numbers using uh, research from the Texas Transportation Institute at Texas A&M University at the cost of the impact of traffic congestion to break that down regionally. In the Hampton Roads area, TRIP estimates that each year the average commuter spends an additional 41 hours annually in traffic due to traffic congestion, 14 gallons of fuel, costing them $850 annually in the value of lost time and wasted fuel. In the Northern Virginia area, TRIP estimates that the average commuter is spending an additional 103 hours annually stuck in traffic, which is causing them to waste 40 gallons of fuel and costing them $2,500 annually in the value of lost time and wasted fuel. In the Richmond area, TRIP estimates the traffic congestion is resulting in commuters spending an additional 34 hours annually in traffic, wasting 18 gallons of fuel, costing them $791 annually in the cost of lost time and wasted fuel. In the Roanoke area, TRIP estimates that each year the average commuter is spending an additional 25 hours annually stuck in traffic due to traffic congestion and wasting 11 gallons of fuel. This is costing the average motorist $629 annually in lost time and wasted fuel. The TRIP report also looked at pavement conditions, and these are not just state maintained, but looking at all major roads in the state, both locally and, and state maintained. TRIP estimates that the overall cost to motorists of driving on rough roads in the state is $3.2 billion. These additional costs include accelerated depreciation, additional wear and tear on the vehicle, and also the cost of wasted fuel and additional tire wear due to driving on rough roads. In the Hampton Road area, 28% of major pavements are rated in poor condition and 29% are rated in mediocre condition, costing the region's motors an average of $714 annually in the cost of driving on rough roads. In Northern Virginia, TRIP estimates that 20% of major roads have pavements in poor condition and 25% are in mediocre condition, costing the average motorist $579 annually in the cost of driving on rough roads. TRIP estimates that in the Richmond area, 21% of major roads have pavements in poor condition and 27% are in mediocre condition, costing the average motorist $596 annually in the cost of driving on rough roads. TRIP estimates that in the Roanoke area, 10% of major roads are rated in poor condition and 25% are rated in mediocre condition, with the average regional motors paying an additional $407 annually in the cost of driving on rough roads. The TRIP report also looked at bridge conditions in Virginia and noted that 4% of bridges in the state are rated in poor condition and 63% are rated in fair condition. We know that, that bridges traditionally have an initial service life of around 50 years. Although to be honest, bridges built in the last decade are, are actually being built to, to higher standards or even longer lasting standards. But we note in the report that 44% of Virginia's bridges are 50 years or older. And that will be an increasing challenge for the state and local governments as, as the, many of these bridges will need either significant rehabilitation or in some cases to be replaced. We took a very close look at traffic safety in, in the state. And we noted that in Virginia, traffic fatalities from 2019 to 2022 increased by 21% from 831 to 1005. This significant increase in traffic fatalities, unfortunately, is consistent with what we've seen across the country as we've seen the significant increase in traffic fatalities largely starting with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Virginia will need to do a lot of work to make sure that, that roadways 
are as safe as possible, which have been found to be a significant factor in improving safety. The report also notes that over the last five years, 16% of traffic fatalities in Virginia have been of pedestrian and motorist. So really, we need a, a comprehensive approach really across the country, but also in Virginia to address this. In 2022, the US Department of Transportation put out a comprehensive national roadway safety strategy and it includes all of the elements from making sure that drivers are driving safer, that we're driving at safer speeds, that we're providing as safe as possible roads and transportation facilities, including bike and pedestrian facilities, and improving the level of post-care crash. All of these together will be critical in reducing this, this tremendous number of traffic fatalities and, and, and really a, a very unacceptable level of traffic fatalities in Virginia. Finally, the report looked at the importance of moving freight across the state and noted that $532 billion worth of goods are shipped annually to or from Virginia, with the majority of that being moved by trucks. And it's anticipated based on value adjusting for inflation that by 2045, the value of freight shipped in Virginia will increase by 73%. Addressing these challenges are, are being impacted, or the ability of the state to address these challenges are being impacted by significant construction highway inflation, which in 2022 was 27%. So taking a significant bite out of the state's additional funding. And while we saw that construction inflation begin to cool in the final quarter of 2022, we anticipate that's gonna be an ongoing challenge. And as the country pivots to, to energy sources uh, it, that, that will, will reduce carbon emissions, uh, and we look at increased use of electric vehicles, that that is going to be a challenge in terms of collecting revenue at the state, but also at the federal level, which are, are, are both highly reliant on gas tax revenues. And so that is going to create a funding sustainability challenge for transportation moving forward that again, will need to be addressed at the uh, local, at, at the state and the federal level. With that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Keith Martin. Um, Keith, again, thank you for uh, participating today. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, I appreciate the work you've done and, and for Trip for developing this report. I think the report uh, does a great job highlighting the importance of transportation investments uh, to ensure continued economic growth and to support our goal of being the best state for business. I think as many of you know, you know businesses rely on an efficient and effective transportation infrastructure uh, to move goods and services um, to their markets. Uh, the Virginia Chamber uh, last Tuesday just had their first infrastructure conference. Um, we were fortunate to have Virginia Secretary of Transportation, Chet Miller there. And Shep said something, and I wrote it down that I thought was very pertinent to this. Uh, he said that Virginia's uh, transportation system is a catalyst for jobs and economic growth. And that I think that just rings so true because Virginia, Virginia's economy depends on a high quality, robust, multimodal transportation network. Uh, so I think this, this report does a great job of, of highlighting needs. Um, it also quantifies the various components of Virginia's transportation system and why we need to stay diligent in maintaining and improving the system. So with that, uh, Rocky, I'll turn it back to you. I, I think the Virginia Chamber has a lot of interest in your recommendations and thank you for identifying uh, areas that we need to continue to work on. Thank you, Keith. We're now gonna hear from Rich Jacobs. Thanks, Rocky. Good morning. Virginia, like many other states, faces significant challenges when it comes to supporting the safety and efficiency of our transportation system. Last year, Virginia saw more than 1,000 traffic fatalities for the first time since 2007. The pandemic has played a role in this increase as driving patterns and behaviors changed significantly. Some drivers engaged in riskier behaviors, such as speeding and not wearing seat belts and driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reported on these risky behaviors. To address these challenges, the U.S. Department of Transportation adopted a comprehensive national roadway safety strategy based on a safe system approach. This approach has five key objectives, safer people, safer roads, safer vehicles, safer speeds, and improved post-crash care. It acknowledges that humans make mistakes 
and focuses on minimizing crashes and their consequences. Virginia's road network is vital for our residents, businesses, and visitors, providing access to homes, jobs, and essential services. Neglecting maintenance and upgrades can lead to higher repair costs and unsafe conditions. We must invest wisely to ensure our infrastructure remains safe and efficient. Virginia's Highway Safety Improvement Program is a step in the right direction. It applies low-cost measures to reduce traffic fatalities and serious crashes, including improving signage, enhancing pedestrian crossings, and banning the use of handheld cell phones while driving. These measures are expected to save more, excuse me, more than 120 lives annually. We must also acknowledge the challenges posed by changes in technology and environmental conditions. The rise of electric vehicles and the increase in fuel efficiency have financial implications for our transportation system. Driver distraction or inattention remains a threat to road user safety. Drive Smart Virginia recently hosted our 10th annual Distracted Driving Summit. It remains to be seen whether technology can mitigate or eliminate distractions arising from technology itself. For now, the driver is still one of the weakest links in our transportation system. The resilience of our transportation infrastructure in the face of extreme weather and environmental changes is crucial. We must ensure our roads, bridges, and transit systems are prepared for the challenges of the 21st century. Our commitment to safety in Virginia must be unwavering. We need to prioritize safer people, safer roads, safer vehicles, safer speeds, and improved post-crash care. We must invest in our infrastructure wisely, implement innovative measures, and adapt to changing technology and environmental conditions. A safe and efficient transportation system is not a luxury, it's a necessity. It supports our economy, our quality of life, and the well-being of everyone who calls Virginia home. Together, we can keep Virginia mobile and ensure a brighter, safer future for all. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Um, I'm going to ask now Carolyn to uh, uh, instruct people at, uh, on uh, how to uh, indicate if they have any questions. Yeah. Thanks, Rocky, and thanks, Rich and Keith, for your remarks as well. As Rocky said, I'm Carolyn Kelly. I'm the Director of Communications and Research for TRIP. So we'll be able to have a Q&A session with the panelists this morning. And if you've got a question for the panelists, you can either use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen on Zoom, or you can submit it to the chat box that there that's there as well. Once you do that, I'll be able to elevate you to a panelist. And so the we'll all be able to see and hear you ask your questions live. Uh, so as we wait for some questions to roll in, I don't see any quite yet, but I will just let everybody know that we'll have a recording of this news conference available on the TRIP website in the next 30 minutes or so. And we'll also have the full report posted there as well. It should be there right now, as well as news releases for all of the urban areas covered in the report. So you should be able to find all of that on the TRIP website. Uh, at this point, Rocky, I don't see any, yeah, any I'll, questions I'll, or any I'll start hands off up. with a, yeah, I, I just had a question for Keith, just, just uh, listening to those comments. I, you, you know, obviously, I'm sure the state chamber takes a, a prominent role in, in attracting or keeping businesses in Virginia. I guess my question would be in ter terms of, of enhancing the, the, the business community or bringing businesses into Virginia, wh where is transportation Fit, fit in when you start to, to look at the potential for companies to expand or come to Virginia? Oh, that's a great question, Rocky. I, I think it depends on an in, each industry, uh, but it's definitely top five, in some cases top three, when they when they talk about locating to Virginia. Uh, I think what we have to keep in mind is that over 95% of the world's consumers are outside the border of Virginia, right? So as they develop their products and services, you know, they got to reach those customers outside our borders. So that's why it's so important to have, you know, an efficient, effective, and a reliable transportation system. Uh, in addition to the products and services, you know, they have a workforce, and the, their workforce is spending a lot of their time commuting in traffic. You know, that's that doesn't help with productivity. It doesn't help with uh, workforce retention either. So uh, there, there's a lot that goes into economic development, and of course, ha having a, a very reliable transportation system is among the top things they look for. Thank you. Rich, the question I, uh, as you were speaking, um, obviously, you know, we, we mentioned in the report 
uh, the ongoing efforts to in improve uh, n not only signage and signalization and, 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 and also uh, information for motorists, but I'm also wondering uh, where improving everything in terms of the roadway environment, including bike and, and pedestrian facilities, uh, how, how does that contribute or, or, or where do we need to go to make the system even safer than it is now so that you know, as you said, motorists make mistakes, but but it provides a, a, a more forgiving environment. Improving the environment, making it safer and uh, less confusing in some instances, better road marking, signage, also delineating where bicyclists and pedestrians and vehicles belong. And it's a sharing the road philosophy. You know, a lot of this just has to do with, uh, you know, you can make roads as safe as you want, but if the, the road users aren't in a share the road mind frame where they're looking out for the other road users. Uh, you know, that's, that's a very important part of the equation, but also the, the infrastructure, you, you just, you can't have safe roads that, that have poor infrastructure. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, do you see any questions indicated? No, we don't have any, any other questions. Okay. Uh, well, well, we'll go ahead and conclude the news conference for now. Uh, again, certainly uh, TRIP staff are available throughout the day for any additional media questions or, or to conduct any uh, additional interviews. Oh, I, I actually think Excellent. I yep. Okay. Rocky, we do have, have two questions. Um, one comes from, and I'll just read them rather than, I'm not sure if they're able to be elevated, elevated to a panelist right now, but the first comes from WVEC and it asks, uh, a statistic was said that 4% of Virginia bridges are considered poor. Do we know where these bridges are in the Commonwealth? And is there any specific me messages to drivers in Hampton Roads as there are a lot of bridges in that area? Well, I'll break the data down a, a little bit further. Uh, and this was in, from Hampton Roads, but we do have data for, for all five urban areas. In the Hampton Roads area, the data shows that 3% of the region's bridges are rated in poor condition, another 67% are rated in fair condition. These bridges are inspected at least every two years, and state and local governments do a good job that if these bridges are, are deteriorated to the level that there's a concern over their ability to carry larger or heavy vehicles, they're going to be restricted to lighter weight vehicles. And so I think from, from a motorist perspective, I think the reality of the bridge is open, it's because the inspections have indicated they can still carry that traffic. The, the concern with two thirds of, of the Hampton Roads region's bridges in fair condition is that as they age, it becomes more costly to keep those bridges still operating. And it's, and it's easy to get behind that curve and, and then you have a significant number of a region's bridges reaching the point where they need reconstruction and what we've seen, of course, is when bridges are closed, which does happen sometimes, it has a huge impact on, obviously, the convenience for public to get places, but also it impacts emergency response time. It starts to have a huge impact on the functioning of, of a region's economy and also it, its safety programs. So that's the challenge. And, and again, the report does break the data down regionally. So uh, for any other reporters, uh, you can look at the, the, the data locally. Thanks, Rocky. And we've got one more question uh, that comes from Raven. And Raven, I've, I've elevated you to a panelist so you can ask the question live, but I don't see it popping up. Um, in the meantime, I'll just read the question. If you've got any follow-up, you can let us know. But that question is, we've talked about the past funding that has allowed Virginia transportation to take leaps and bounds Keith Martin, if you could answer this, how much funding is needed to make future transportation infrastructure uh, a reality? Or excuse me, future improved infrastructure a reality? Um, th that's a great question. Uh, I, and my short answer is I don't know. Uh, and I will say the reason why is because uh, Tripp and, and Rocky have identified some um, areas that we need improvement on. Uh, as most of you probably know, Virginia has a smart scale process, uh, a funding formula that's used to determine uh, when and how and what, what projects get funded. Uh, so I don't know if 
what of these recommendations are currently in the process or in the hopper right now? Uh, what are the ones we need to add? Uh, but I would say we do support efforts to maintain and improve our system because it's important for our workforce, it's important for economic development. Uh, but I think over the coming weeks and months, we'll probably take this report and actually look at the needs that have been identified and, and, and make a corollary uh, look at smart scale and see where these projects line up moving forward. You know, I'll, I'll just add on to that. You, you, we did see uh, in 2020 that that a lot of the the fees being collected were, were 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 changed basically to bring additional revenue in at the state level, and then the federal program in 2021 allowed a 40 percent boost in federal funding for surface transportation, including roads, highways, and public transit in Virginia. The challenge, as we pointed out, was last year we saw, we saw a 27% increase in the cost of, of highway repairs and construction. And so, unfortunately, it was absolutely vital that the federal program went into effect, but really saw a significant bite taken out of that additional revenue. And then on top of that, Virginia continues to grow at a significant level, and we now see vehicle travel getting higher than pre-pandemic levels. And so the challenge ahead, and these decisions will have to be made in Virginia and, and ultimately at the federal level, will be how to, to provide the additional resources that are going to be necessary. We've also seen across the country that as road and bridges age, that there's a point of diminishing returns where routine repairs don't last as long as once as they did. And there's a recognition that a lot of this older infrastructure ultimately is going to need to be reconstructed. And those, those costs are significantly higher than simple repairs. So that, that bill's coming due. And so that will be really something that state and federal legislatures will be grappling with. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, I think we'll go ahead and, and conclude uh, today's news conference. Again, thank you so much to our, our speakers, Keith Martin and Rich Jacobs for joining us. And, and, and thanks everyone who took time to uh, come to the webinar today. And again, TRIP is available for any follow-up questions. Thank you.